I could blow a bubble with my bum bum bum. Really? Do it. I got no. We'll do that on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing blowing bubbles with their buttholes. Remember, uh, like the weird Al Yankovic era. Yeah. Just like all of those funny songs. That's, oh my god! And so many of them now. I'm like, if that came out now, oh yeah, that would be so canceled. Absolutely. Right. We were we were order number forty four. Four 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 new new beginnings or something or something. You know, I I was seeing eight 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 the other day like crazy. Really? And then eight eight eight. I never see eight eight eight. Me either. <laughs> Sorry, I had to really suck it. I had to, like <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a snot bubble. Um, <laughs> I saw hella eight eight eights, and then I went on. I was just on Instagram like going through stories, and Lauren Sanderson. Remember her? Yes. I her story. She was. Uh, it was like counting money at the bank or something and the total was eight hundred eighty eight dollars whoa and she even said like something about angel numbers and like her and the person at the bank were bonding over it that's crazy. But, like for that to be her dollar amount it was i don't know and then for you to see it like, right like on the story i've been seeing one two three four mm. multiple times a day this past these past few weeks well good meant job to be, meant to be it means you're doing good job good job i'm listening to my people my people my people the voices the voices <laughs> hey guys <laughs> <laughs> happy monday holy shit happy monday we're in a silly goofy mood yeah we are um last night was so fun it was so fun so last night was the first night alex and i have had just us since like before all of our travels to California the, the yeah. past few weeks. This whole week we've been prefacing like, ooh, we're going to go out Friday. We're going to go out Friday. Like it's going to be our night out. Yeah. I was even telling like Monica about it. Like, yeah, we're probably going to be hungover Saturday. Like right. all about it. Yeah. And we ended up getting, we got ready and we were both sitting on the couch and we were like, oh, okay, we just have to force ourselves to get out. Like we didn't really want to get ready, ready. Yeah. I was like down to go out, but I just like wanted to stay in a hoodie and like messy hair. And yep. Shit super casual so we stay super casual and our plan was <clears> to go to um i found this like viral reel of a wing stop restaurant it's called flavor f-l-a-v apostrophe r it was on wing stops like official account and they had posted um like a pop-up version of wing stop but it was all fancy food and it was like, like fries you, with caviar and, right like, amazing ingredients and shit like really nice food and like people dress up and you go so the whole plan we were the whole time we were trying to find how to make a res there but yeah. like they make it so difficult so we found an address of one of the locations kind of by us and the plan was to go there and then just see where the night takes us from there we would just like walk around um we kind of figured since especially since it popped off on instagram that there was a chance that we, they like would just take a walk in, in yeah. right so we knew that if we showed up we'll just find a restaurant nearby so we show up to wing stop and it's just like a regular old wing stop and we're like ah so we're like scouring the real the comments on the real again like where the fuck is this flavor thing and we ended up asking one of the employees at the wing stop she was like oh yeah that was like a couple weeks ago like it's not even a thing anymore it was a pop-up event which sure that's cool but Wingstop's official post for this pop-up event had zero details about where it was, A. B. No dates. Zero dates of start or stop or anything like that. Like, on a marketing level, that was so dumb because it popped off. We were ready to go. Right. I guarantee we weren't the only ones. All the comments 100%. were like, where is this? And Wingstop would even respond and be like, NYC. And it's like, okay, but where, where? in New York? And then to respond, NYC, they literally... they probably posted the reel after the event was already finished yeah it was like a summary and of they're it. not telling people like uh, we were saying at the very least at the end of that caption it should at least said like comment down below if you like want, want us to, to come, come back. back like they had no no details about this really cool thing they did like right. it, like marketing wise to, i love when like uh kind of like panera with the baguette bag like yeah. i love when like they touch into a different like avenue. They of go up to the they industry. go up by class. Yep. though. like yep. these like very normal brands go up like one class level in a way. Totally, with something fancy to like bring in a new market. Whatever the real looked really cool. Like the inside looked really cool. The plating was beautiful. The lighting was moody. Like it looked like a really nice event restaurant. And they just had no fucking marketing around it. 
so dumb crazy so wing stop if you're listening they are let us take over just like yeah we'll run the company we will do all of your marketing just us too yeah i love wings huh she does eat I, a I, lot of wings i eat a lot of wings <laughs> huh no she's not kidding huh huh um so we couldn't get wing stop oh yeah so we didn't go there so we just started walking and we, we walked. walked we walked 20 blocks wait i'm gonna look at my step count <laughs> yesterday i also i had a day out like on the town yesterday so yeah, i know you did a lot of running around in general yesterday yeah thirteen thousand six hundred eighty-seven 687 steps when we check we probably walked like 2000 steps because remember when we checked it was kind of at the beginning of our walk and i was at i think i was at like a 11 or 12 yeah so i think we ended up pushing it like oh, 1500 right. or 2000 we steps. walked a lot we walked well so we were like okay <laughs> so we obviously can't do wing stop so let's just walk until we find a restaurant this wing stop was in a particular neighborhood that literally had no restaurants it was all like retail residential it was just not the area to go like restaurant hopping so we end up walking literally 20 blocks down to like a more poppin area it was kind of cold too. It, yeah it was very cold and i was just in a zip up because i thought we'd be like out, in and out yeah. yeah me too i was in like a blazer it wasn't yeah we weren't prepared to walk that much in the cold <laughs> i don't know why we just didn't get in a car but we just didn't know where we were going right we really wanted it to be one of those nights with like no plan let's let's go somewhere we've never been before like don't even make a reservation and like discover something new so we were like no we got to keep walking right and then finally we were so hungry so finally Working. i had to look at the map we were in union square at this point and i was like okay even around union square is a lot of just like panda express wing stop like quick meals and we wanted a restaurant so i looked something up and it was two blocks away it was called strip house strip house really cool steakhouse it was like like old hollywood it had like burlesque dancers all over the walls and mm -hmm. like all the walls were red like low ceiling it was a like white tablecloth a really, really cool nice vibe. restaurant so we walk in we're like okay let's just do this so we walk in and we're seated well it was we walk so in weird. yeah we walk in we're like hi just the two of us like we don't have a reservation and she was like okay well i, I can show you this table that you have she like looked at her coworker though and she's like i'm gonna show them 21 right and we were like, what okay. the fuck is 21? She was 21 like, I'll Savage. show. Right. <laughs> He's just in the back. Like, hey. You can sit with me. <laughs> um, she was like, I'll show you guys a table. and You can let me know if you guys want it. And we're like, okay. So we walk all weird. the way to the back of the it, restaurant. All the way, you guys. Like, it, it was I kept deep. looking back at Alex like, where, where is are we going? Us? And it's this like single table literally in between the two doors that lead to the kitchen. So we're like, we're seating now. We're, we're seat. You could tell that she probably did that earlier to a group of people and they were and like, now nah, like, we're going to go. Yeah. We were like, fuck we're it. Like, like sure. we're starving. We'll sit here. So we both got full steak dinner. It mm -hmm. was so good. Stupidly expensive. It was so expensive. And I didn't even realize it until it was obviously too late. And our we split the bill and then we get our individual bills back. And I was like, oh, wait, did they not split it? Did they put it all on my card? I thought that too, like, Kristen. No, that was a split That was value. a single. That was individual meals. The truffle butter you added to your steak was $22 you alone. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. And my foie gras was 19 Oh, I did not know that. I just to add he read off the specials and he was like you could add he slipped it in there you could add truffle butter to your steak tonight and i ordered my filet i got an eight ounce filet which was what like the which was well priced it was 54 yeah it's a normal for a, for a steakhouse it's normal for a filet yep and i'm like let's add the truffle butter on top 22 dollars <laughs> that's actually so not that's why okay so originally the toppings we we're going to put on our steaks were seven dollars each yeah whatever we could get it's still kind of pricey but like seven bucks sure and then when she, he was reading it off because he was saying the price after every single one oh. he was he would say like truffle butter 28 he wasn't saying dollars he was saying a number because it's like more classy i wasn't listening to that clearly so you ordered the truffle butter and in my head i was like oh she's going big okay i'll go big and i was like yeah i'll do the foie gras like i just thought i thought you were on a vibe so i, I followed you sure if you jump i jump right so we yeah. walked out of there and my drink was d decent i got like a mezcal some smoky drink and it came out really nice presentation but it was it was mid my and negroni was incredible my glass of wine was oh my god <laughs> i needed that i needed that glass of wine um 
Are you 50? Our meals individually were $170 each. It was so dumb. And we get the check and we look at each other and we're like, A, we can't be doing no. this. We literally said, we can't be doing no, this. I, I, I look at Kristen and I'm like, special events only. Special, spe- special night out. No, you go, I, I don't think I'd come back, just the two of us. But like maybe for a group, it'd be fun. I said birthdays. Yeah, for birthdays only. Birthdays only. Yeah, yeah. it was so expensive. But Stupid we literally, expensive. we left the restaurant. We were like, well, um, well, if we go home now, like we would have just spent that on the whole night out anyway. So like, right. it's better that we're going home now. Like it's, it, we it, like it levels out. It, yeah. Like we had to talk each other down. So we it ended was up so expensive. coming home after that meal because God forbid we spent a dollar more that night. I would have felt night. like shit. Yeah. If we had a full night out, we would have spent an, at least another hundred drinks in the city. You guys are at least like 23 so bucks. Stupid. It's so dumb. Each. Yeah. We would have walked out. Of it would have been night. like a $400 night. For in like for what? For like what? nobody's birthday. Like, no. There was no reason to be stupid. doing that. It was stupid. So dumb. Stupid. We were so hungry though. Starving. You guys, and there were no other options. There were literally no <laughs> other options. And we did what we had to do. And we'll never forget it. And we'll, yeah, we'll never let and it we down. And we to tell we'll, the tale. We'll never do it again. My stomach hurts, though. Yeah. I was kind of wrecked. Well, today. okay, so we were like, yes, let's go home. Perfect. I don't even want to go out anymore. We were tired from our meal. I got the best mashed potatoes. I got these thousand layer potatoes, you yeah. guys. It's not really a thousand layers. Yeah, it was for sure like 12. The th- did you catch the thousand was in quotes? Oh, uh, it's probably like legal. was like, yeah. hey, guys, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get sued. Wait a minute. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> anyway go on (laughs) yeah so we were super tired so we ended up coming home but we had our taxi driver drop us a few blocks away and we picked up a bottle of red wine organic organic red wine pinot noir Noir. and noir and we came home and i my boyfriend taught me chess a few months ago and i'm a newbie at chess but i am literally hooked to like i was about to say i'm literally so good oh, no. <laughs> like, be humble no i don't know i'm not great um i but i, I just great. i love thank you uh but i love playing like i literally i could sit down and play right now it's all i think about and i like i want to play after this yes yeah. and i have been begging Kristen to learn but every time we just like you're doing something or you like don't want to get in the mood to like learn a game which is so valid but last night you were like, let's, let's learn chess. And I was so excited. So we taught it very well too. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so happy. I fully understand the game. I got to get better at it. It's going to get better with practice and strategy totally. and like learning possibilities. But you remember all the moves and everything. I wrote down what each she, yeah. little play, what are they called? Pieces. Pieces. Yeah. I almost called them players. Yeah. They're the players. The players. I had to like write down what they all do. And you had stuff. a little cheat sheet. Yeah, it's on the back of her seat. But um, yeah, no, I, I get it. And I'm excited to like learn more about it. I feel it's I feel so smart. Fun. It's so fun. It's so satisfying. That's what remember I kept telling you, like itches something in my brain that has never been itched before. Yeah, it's like uh, another thing I like about it is how it's slow. Because even like when you play cards, you know, you give people a sec to think about their hand. But for the most part, it ends up being like, OK, go. Come yeah. on. Like you, you kind of rush cards a little bit. This, it's, like, not the etiquette of the game. So you don't feel that pressure of, like, oh, fuck, it's my turn. You could literally stare at the board for, like, minutes. Yeah. One of my turns, I think I took, like, 15 minutes yeah. to think. And you, it like, so fun. it's, that's the fun of it. it like, oh, yeah. It was so satisfying. It, like, tickled my brain. We had a bottle of wine. We were listening to Adele. Yeah. <laughs> but Adele like, and John like Mayer. Good, like, happy Adele and happy John Mayer. Like, not in our feels. Yeah. Like, we were... You know, it, it wasn't was a like vibe. a depressing night. It was a happy vibe. It turned out to be the, oh, and then we, we had a sleepover on the couch. We both slept on the couch. Oh yeah. We were like, <laughs> it was probably like 1am. We're like, okay, sh- we should go to bed. And the night before last night, I slept on the couch alone just cause like, I just want to sleep on the couch. You ever, a couch mm-hmm. sleep is so underrated. It really is. Oh my God. So I looked at Alex. I was like, um, do you want to have a sleepover on the couch? And you were like, yes let me grab my blanket <laughs> i grab my blanket and two pillows and we got our pillows and blankets and we slipped uh like feet to feet yeah feet to head isn't that feet to feet our feet were touching oh yeah 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 because like imagine you get it <laughs> <laughs> we slept standing up <laughs> we spooned <laughs> on the couch we slept feet to feet i'm just picturing like <laughs> just like toes touching pretty much they were but yeah we uh then we stayed up till 4 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> on the couch watching 
one day on yeah. ne- Netflix. Watch I it. I just finished it this morning. Um, no spoilers. Yeah, no spoilers, but. Watch it. it it's it's good. It's uh, really sad, though. It's, it's like a really. It made me, like, really scared to fall in love. It hits you in the heart. <laughs> it really yeah. does hit you in the heart. It's, it, like, the only way to describe it. It hurts. So go into it. Um, prepared. Prepared. Look at the lighting in my bedroom right now. It's beautiful. I, the lighting in our whole apartment is has been really nice today. Stunning. The sun Stunning. is out. The sun is out and shining. Sun's out, buns out. Okay. Um, <laughs> I saw a TikTok talking about unfun facts. Did you see that? Mm-mm-mm. And I thought it was such a good like conversation starter because everyone's like, what's a fun fact about yourself? And it's like, oh, I've been to Guam seven times. Like think like little right. things like that. An unfun fact about yourself is just like, um, I, my, my toothbrush is purple right now. Like just like a fact fact you wouldn't know about me, but that are like not fun. You know, what's crazy. My toothbrush is purple. Mine's purple right now. Really? Yeah. Is it the dark purple one? We're using the same one. (laughs) Like shit. You're going into my bathroom. (laughs) No, it's light. Okay. It's like, it's like translucent purple. Okay. So what's your unfun fact? I don't know. What's yours? I was just thinking we could think about it. I have one. Go for it. I put two dryer sheets in the dryer with every load I dry. I do the same thing. I do the same that's thing. That's why we get along. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's our bond. I was going to say, that's what we bond That's our with. link. <laughs> our invisible string. <laughs> invisible string theory. It's time to wash my makeup rag. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I usually go about three or four washes before it's time to give it a good wash like three or four uses <laughs> you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i just thought of one of mine let's hear it my like tub drain is like super clogged right now <laughs> <laughs> so my showers have been like pooling <laughs> up, like ankle deep alex i need to call maintenance no you need some drano in that bitch <laughs> I have some next to my toilet. I just haven't used it. Use it. I know. It's because I fucking washed Link in there and all her hair got in the drain. That was stupid on my part. I need to get a snake down there and like yeah. dig it out. I have snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you, that was, you were genuinely scared. You were super scared. Like on snakes. <laughs> scared. <laughs> They're orange. <laughs> oh, Halloween snakes. Oh God! Okay, should we freaking hop into this? Yeah, we need to. We need to stop dicking around. Yeah, and quit, start helping people. Quit joshing with around. Stuff. You know what? I feel bad for all the joshes out there. Quit joshing around. Quit yeah, joshing around. I don't know. They're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as you know, this week we're doing our uh, end of the month general advice column episode, and we had you guys send in. All your entries to advicepodcast at gmail.com for future. Like I said, last Monday of every month, we do this. So you can always, like throughout the month, if something comes up, send them in. And we'll hopefully get to them by that episode. Um, But we got so many this time. And it just, I get so excited. Me too. I like, I wish we could do it all. But there are actually so many. Let's do it all. Oh my God. Longest episode ever. (laughs) These subject lines though. Are you seeing some of these? A lot of long distance. Couldn't be me. Relationships. Okay, I found one with a interesting subject line. I'm going to start. It says, my ex is ruining my future love life. Uh-oh. And then parentheses, they said, it's actually me. I'm ruining it. I want to start off by saying how I love you two so much and have both helped me get through things in my life. Mm. Hopefully you can help with this one. I've been single for a little over a year now after a mutual breakup with a boy I'd known since kindergarten. We dated five years. The relationship was great at first, but I found myself pouring into him way more than he did to me closer to the end. Every time I voiced my feelings, he got frustrated with me and made me feel like a burden. He said he wouldn't change, and I said I wasn't going to settle, so we decided to mutually break it off. We decided to keep in contact, as we've been best friends since kinder, and I've recently found that I should have went no contact instead. Kristen, just know you've got the right idea, lol. It is not hard for me to cut someone off. That's not good for me, but I find myself so tied to this guy. It feels unbearable. He was my first love. Every time I post something that looks like a date or get flowers, he questions me about it, but then he says he's fallen out of love with me and it doesn't matter what I do, but he finds ways to always question me if I'm talking to someone. I'm not dating, nor am I talking to anyone, by the way. 
I'm not delusional. I know he won't change. It's been a year and he still is emotionally unavailable. So my question is, how can I move on and break this tie? I want to start dating for fun, but I don't go out much because I'm a full-time student nursing and and work part-time. I'm extremely afraid of wasting my time when I could focus on my career instead. Sorry, this is long, but please help in any way you can and feel free to scold me if I need a little tough love, LOL. Love you girls. You're both glowing in New York. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. No contact. That's like, it's that's literally it. the one and only answer. It's so intentional when, when men, when, like when men just, when, <laughs> when men, just men, when men drop little sprinkles of wanting to keep you in his life, but doesn't give you anything more because Even the men know that they're not going to give you what you want, Mm -hmm. but they're doing the absolute bare minimum so that you do not forget them and you don't give yourself the opportunity to move on in the way that you need to after a breakup. The fact that like, like you said, you'll post flowers or whatever, and he thinks that you're out on a date and like he's doing that with the intention of not even continuing a conversation after that he's just like it looks like she's pulling away I need to dabble just a little bit so that she comes right back like Mm -hmm. it's a tug and war game and if you give him any ounce of opportunity to communicate he will like literally when it comes to these situations I like I am a big fan of blocking Mm -hmm. get like remove him from your life it's the only opportunity and chance chance to give yourself the opportunity to move on move on yeah it's fucking hard I get it like you guys you said since kindergarten you dated for five years like you have a very very strong soul tie with this person not saying it's your person you need to be with them forever soul ties I mean Alex and I have a soul tie like you you can have soul ties with several people Mm -hmm. I think I think we all know that by now um yeah so of course it's going to be hard and of course it's going to feel unbearable. And those are all very valid feelings, but have some faith in yourself here. Yeah. It's not going to kill you. It, yes, it's going to hurt. But like if you move about life, not doing things simply because they're hard or they're going to hurt you, like you're going to be stuck forever. And that, that applies across the board. Um, but yeah, the, this soul tie, it, it's an anchor right now. It's, and that's exactly what he's doing by tapping in when you post, you know, whatever, it's just this like soul anchor that's like it's the dog and pool. You're like trying to get above water, but like he, he's putting you back just a little bit, a little bit too much. Um, yeah. So no contact. You guys know how we feel about that. I mean, we're both products of it, and it's we literally had a full episode about it just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Like, it. If I wasn't no so contact necessary. right now, I don't. I mean, who fucking knows? You know, yeah. like it's just it is it, just the only way to go. If like you really don't have any reason for this person to be in your life it's not like you guys have a kid where you like need to still be talking or like you know trying to split up like through like divorce you have to like through the papers and all that like you don't need to be talking um it's just a comfort thing at this point which again valid but uh you know think about the reasons why you still want to be in contact because I think if you boil it down to just like admitting that it's because you probably don't want to be alone because it's comfortable you'll quickly realize that those feelings that he's fulfilling, you can also just get from yourself. Yep. Like it just takes some practice. And I mean, it's all just like a habit too. We said that on the no contact episode, like it's about breaking that habit of who you call when you're having a bad day. Creating and new habits. Yeah. It's going to be cold Turkey. You're literally like starting a new year's resolution, like start it today. And it's going to be hard for the first like month or so. And then it's going to be the best thing you ever did. Yep. Okay. Next one. This one is called, I broke up one of my boyfriend's friendships. Oh no. Hello, beautiful ladies. Love the podcast, obviously. I wanted to share. An <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted to share an experience with you guys because it has been eating me up inside and I have been overthinking the situation that happened to me in August of last year. I will try my best to keep this short as there is lots to cover, LOL. So basically my boyfriend and I, let's call him David, have been dating for over two years now and we used to hang out with his best friend Stuart and his girlfriend Leah. I changed the names already. (laughs) We would always go on double dates and hang out. 
Keep in mind, Leah has been known to be a control freak, and I have been told by several people that they do not like her at all, and they just tolerate her to be around Stuart. That being said, I decided to organize a group camping trip in the summer and asked a lot of people, including Stuart and Leah. I paid for the trip with my own money Damn. and because, yeah, that's crazy. And because I didn't know exact numbers, I told everyone they could pay me after the trip so that we could split it evenly. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> I ended up going a day late with another friend because we had a concert on the Friday night. J just keep that little tidbit of info in the back of your mind, please, and thank you. Anyway, Stuart and Leah decided to come a day late, too. I can't remember why, and they brought Leah's 34-year-old uncle and 19-year-old brother. What? I am 22 and my boyfriend is 23. All our friends are the same age. Anyway, we have a great time camping and Sunday rolls around. We're staying until Monday. And Stuart and Leah decide to leave because they think it's going to rain, which is absolutely no problem at all. The next day as I'm driving home, I send a text to the group chat saying what everyone owes me. It was $10 a night. Then Leah Damn. texts me saying they only have to pay for one night because that's all the time they stayed for. I told her, no, that's not right. Everyone is paying the same because when I booked it, I was told everyone was staying the same amount of time. And if I had made everyone pay before we left, they would have paid for the whole three nights. I missed a night, remember? And I still was going to pay the full amount because it's literally $10. Anyway, long story short, we got in a fight and she called me cheap and attacked my character. My boyfriend, who doesn't like to cause trouble, even tried to not pick sides. But once he saw the text, he was so mad at her for being such a bitch. She uninvited me to Stuart's cabin trip that we do each year with some buddies because apparently I'm a horrible person to be around. My boyfriend decided not to go, even though he was really looking forward to it because he didn't want to go without me. I told him he could have gone. Anyway, we haven't spoken to them since I stopped answering her text as she was being very hostile towards me over a simple $20. They ended up not paying for any of the trip, so uh, I was out $120. Stuart, Leah, her uncle, and brother did not pay me. That's so fucked. So fucked. Honestly, I didn't miss the friendship, but now my boyfriend hasn't spoken to Stuart since, and I feel like I broke up their friendship because I didn't roll over and die when she decided to attack me over the money situation. Am I the asshole for making her pay? Should I talk to my boyfriend about it? He has lots of friends and doesn't seem to mind that they don't talk anymore. But I constantly blame myself, even though all I did was stand up for myself. I really just need an outsider's opinion. I'm sorry, this is super long, but you need all the details to form an opinion. I trust you ladies with my life. You are doing the God's work. Much love from Vancouver, Canada. Woo! Jessica. You can say my name. There are like a million Jessicas. <laughs> <laughs> There's good. probably more than a million. Yeah. It's a very common name. How many people are in the world? Like 30 billion or something? I think it's 8 billion. Really? How is 30 billion? Maybe. I have How many no there are con I have no concept of I feel like we amount. have a billion Jessicas probably. You think? No, that's, no, crazy. that's crazy. <laughs> Not the point. Yeah, sorry. Jessica. Okay, Jessica. Um I don't think you're the asshole Not at all. all. He's his I, own person. Like yeah. if he doesn't want to talk to this friend anymore because that situation maybe brought out a true color or clearly brought out a true color that like he didn't vibe with and it's like my thing is is him and Stuart are adults and it yeah. didn't it's not like you and Stuart gotten in an argument like it was right. his girlfriend that you like butt heads with right I they're grown adult men if they're going to let an argument between their girlfriends break up their friendship then that's on them that's like on them. yeah he could very easily you know go to Stuart and be like they'll fit which is valid they'll figure it out they'll hash it out when they need to like mm -hmm. it is between you and the girlfriend mm -hmm. I don't think Stuart's involved they're adults it's not your fault not at all you're not an asshole but interesting that she called you cheap that's what I thought it was like you're cheap you're not just gonna pay the other ten dollars make it like, even for everybody yeah that's so dumb it's so and you brought your, your uncle your uncle and your little brother that's so weird. And didn't pay like that. She's cheap. Ugh. Yeah, she's tacky. Ugh. But. Sorry, Jessica. Okay, next one. The subject line is smoking weed, love triangle, ghosted. Hey, Kristen and Alex. I've been listening since day one and you both feel like the older sisters I never knew I needed. Mm -hmm. I would like to stay in on. Buckle up. This is a long one. The title pretty much says it all. Let's rewind to December 2023. 
I was going to a Christmas party and thought I would invite some guy I hadn't talked to in a hot second. I casually slid into his DMs and did just that. He left me on red, which really didn't surprise me. However, what did surprise me is that a few days later, he sent me his number. Just a number. No context. Nothing. I texted him. That's so cocky. That's, yeah. Ew. I texted him just to see what was up. Nothing crazy. And that's when he told me, nothing much. We... (laughs) He seems so dry. Yeah. <laughs> we had a great conversation about the small things and basic necessities one mentions to catch up with another. We were talking about work and what he does. As he works the night shift, he tells me most nights are boring. I told him to find ways to change up his routine and make it more interesting. He tells me he usually smokes before he goes in and that helps. We had talked off and on through the, through the years and I remind him that he once told me he wanted to, and I quote, Take my smoking virginity. Ew, no, smoking weed virginity. This guy's weird. <laughs> I'm 22 and have not smoked prior. I'm down, but most of my friends who I would feel comfortable smoking with have moved out of town. He confirmed if I really wanted wanted him to quote smoke me up, <laughs> and we ended up hanging three days later. I told a new friend from work about this and she heavily cautioned me against it she said it was a bad idea and that type of man is not someone i want to be hanging out with and should not see anything long term with she's a good friend yeah she is she didn't even want to come that night but she did just for support just in case anything were to go down which i still appreciate that night was the best night i've had in quite some time she came to pick me up and we drove across town to meet his meet this old friend of mine We met him at an old place he and his friends used to meet up during high school. He told me we might go outside and to dress warm. He also said, quote, I think you might want some ice cream later. (laughs) He asked if I needed a drink and he bought me a water. He was so thoughtful and the night was amazing. We got into his car and just drove around for a good three hours. This is such like a hometown vibe. Yeah. He and I smoked and my friends, my friend from work was vibing in the backseat living her best sober life. He showed me what to do and he kept asking how I was feeling and if I was okay. Babe, I was thriving. Smoking or not, I was straight up thriving. He was so thoughtful and it was such a good night. When the night was done, he texted me asking if I made it home all right. He also texted my friend asking if I made it home all right. Here's where the love triangle starts. After he texted her about me, she calls him. To this day, I don't know why or what they talked about. She cancels her plan she had with another dude after we smoked. He and I were fine the next day, but then he started getting weird. She tells me that her and my stoner friend have been talking and asked about my feelings towards him. I tell her essentially that I have very strong feelings for him, but if he doesn't feel the same, there's nothing I could do. She took that as permission to hang with him a few days later. Never Wait, mind, she's not cool friend yeah. anymore. This is the same girl? Yeah, this is literally the, the like, same friend. Yep. Uh-oh. After about a week, I tell her we need to talk. She said she was beyond sorry about going behind my back and all of these things. She told me she had a relapse and that drug, quote, that you're only supposed to take every six months, made her horny. So she hit up the dude and we smoked with who I have had a mad crush on or did. She made it sound as if they fucked. She ended up telling me she repented and restored her relationship with God and that she's not talking to him anymore. I text my stoner friend telling him that she told me what happened and asked if he was okay. He asked me what she told me and eventually told me this isn't the first time something like this happened and he would be okay soon. I clear up some questions I had from my work friend's convo with him and we seem to have put most of the pieces together. He told me that they never fucked and she didn't want to because it would have gone against her values. He was very insightful and helped give me clarity. I texted him a few days later, wondering if he still wanted to grab that ice cream from the night we smoked. He thought we did, but I reminded him every place was closed when we got done. He was surprised I still wanted to hang with him. We had a little chat, and he ends up leaving me on red, which again, I'm not surprised about, but damn dude. That was all about a month ago at this point, and up until maybe last week, he's been living rent-free in my mind. I could not stop thinking about him, about the night we smoked, how fun and chill it was. I definitely feel like I'm in a better place now mentally. I feel stupid that it's taken me this long to get over him because of one night. He's so hot, or at least I think I think so. He and I go way back, so maybe it's rooted in childhood somewhere. I remember sitting with my friends in high school and showing them a picture of him, and I kid you not, every single one of them told me he's absolutely not cute. <laughs> but I still think he's hot and kind and smart. 
but he's not living rent free in my mind anymore. If he wanted to, he would type shit. I feel like I'm in the middle of moving on and it feels weird. He's the only one I've ever had serious feelings for and wanted to stay available for him whenever he comes around, but I cannot be living my life like that, wondering and waiting for something that might not ever come. My so-called friend from work told me he was a waste of her time and that he was a waste of mine, but I kept holding on, praying, and wanting so badly for her to be wrong. I wanted to figure it out for myself, and now I guess I have. My parents are throwing a little party, literally nothing crazy, for my brother and I, because we're moving to LA. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about texting him to come, but I know I probably shouldn't. I don't know, man. It's all been a whirlwind. Thanks for the advice. Love ya, Anonymous. I've attached photos of me, stoner boy, and work friend. I'm the mirror selfie. Oh my God, cute. Yeah. Stoner guy for it's sure. Stoner guy. And then that's the friend back there in that picture, I'm assuming. You're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah. I think you just have like a, like, like, a, like a crush. It's a crush. And you. I think you're liking the chase right now and the yeah. fact that he's like. Bad boy. Bad boy. Like can't have him. Not good for you. No. I think you'll I think you'll move move on and you'll see that you're you'll be offered something that you don't have to chase. Yep. And I I would just personally I would think to myself like if he's capable of like kicking it with two girls and entertaining them both right. like romantically like flirty wise like he's a dog. Yeah. You know, like, you don't want to be in a relationship with someone like that. Yeah, he's capable of doing that to your friend like for all he knows that could have been your best friend ever but right. he didn't give a fuck no. he was still like oh yeah two bitches like, yeah whatever. oh a girl called me dope yeah dope we're gonna kick it so think about that yeah i don't i don't think you should i mean maybe if you you said you guys have been friends since childhood like if you feel like you want to say bye before you move yeah whatever. i get that yeah just protect your heart though yes i don't think you should do like it swoon of, over like, this guy anymore yeah and don't like do it out of trying to get him back or anything like no he's a i think I yeah I, I think there's you, something there's way more like depth and like yeah. special <laughs> and exciting out there for you than just a guy you had a good smoke night with right Take it as a good memory yep that's okay too exactly good point yeah okay on the same smoking note this one is called how much smoking is too much Hi, mm. girls. I'll cut straight to the chase. Basically, my boyfriend and I are newly engaged and have been together for six years. He started smoking weed in eighth or ninth grade. We're 28 now. When we first started dating, his smoking wasn't anything I thought to be crazy. I smoked here and there in college and post-grad, but I'm definitely not an ever everyday user. It makes me too tired and anxious. But as we've continued through our relationship, his weed use has gone up and up. When we moved in together three years ago is when it really started to get to me. He began smoking morning, moon, 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 noon and night and not just one hit or a J, but bowl after bowl after bowl in his bong. He has to have a hit before we eat anything. He has to bring at least one J when we do hikes or anything outdoors. He has to look up dispensaries to go to first thing from the airport when we go on vacation. He doesn't have a med court card or anything. He has a dealer at home and goes to dispensary dispensaries where it's legal recreationally. He definitely use it, it, uses it as a crutch for dealing with stress. He works with his parents and their dynamic is really toxic and stressful since childhood. At this point, in my opinion, the way he uses weed addiction like and overuse Addiction runs in his family. I've had so many conversations and fights with him about it because I think it's concerning and he promises to slow down but never can. It's extremely difficult for him to go more than one day without it. I've told him I'm not asking him to quit entirely. I just don't think the way he's using it is healthy, both physically and mentally. But he cannot fight the urge to do it every single day, multiple times a day. Again, I'm not totally against it and understand it's beneficial for all kinds of things. I could probably use some before bed to sleep better. But before he goes to work, when he gets home and multiple multiple times throughout the evening is a lot. I want to marry this man and start a family, but I honestly don't know how he's going to manage the, his smoking with the kids around. I just don't know what else to do at this point. I give him the space and support to talk to me when he's stressed, but he always says he doesn't want to talk. I offer to go on bike rides or walks with him instead of smoking. What else can I do? Thanks for reading and for any advice. Love you girls and the pod. Okay. So one thing that kind of made my ears perk up is when 
you were saying there was history of addiction in his family. Yeah. And if that is the root of this, even more of a reason why there's nothing you could do about it. And I know that sounds shitty, um, but that's just the reality of addiction. Ultimately, you know, whether it's like a heavy addiction or just like a crazy habit or however you want to look at it, nobody's going to change unless they want to change, especially something like this where it's a vice that he's finding comfort in after, you know, a stressful day or during a stressful day or, you know, whatever. Is there, did, did they mention like any lack of productivity or anything? Like, is it affecting no, uh, your like quality of life? And like, no, they mentioned that he has to smoke like before every before. meal and it's just become so ingrained like in their every day. Yeah. Yeah. Which does, I mean, I, I see where you're coming from. Like I, I see how that could interfere with, and like, even like you said, if you ha- want to have kids, what kids one day, like how is it going to be around kids? Yeah. I, I get this. I, yeah, I, I have a, a, like a weird relationship with this topic though. Cause like all my life, my mom smoked weed. And, like, I remember it irritating the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. But then also, like... As an adult now. I'm like, I I also get it. Like, I'm high right now. Like, I smoked before this. Granted, it's the weekend, though. Like, I have those boundaries with myself. I don't smoke during the week, during the day. During the week, I only smoke before bed. Mm -hmm. The weekends, I allow myself to go crazy. Um, But, yeah, I I think... I see the concern. And, like, the addiction point is such a valid point. It's so valid. But there's nothing you could do about it. That's what's... That's... Oh, it's, it's really frustrating. I totally get it. I had a boyfriend right out of high school who used to smoke and he smoked from my point of view, he smoked for the same reason as far as like his anxiety and not wanting to address a broader point in his life Mm -hmm. and to kind of, um, like mask things. And it really bugged me for that reason. Yep. And my current boyfriend smokes every day as well. But it doesn't bug me because he just likes weed. Yeah. It's like it's he, not like a deeper thing. He's not like he's like rotting on the couch. No. Like he's, he's normal. He yeah. And it he I could tell he's doing it recreationally. So I see and for me to like feel differently for two different relationships that goes to show that like I see where you're coming from. Totally. When you just want like the people around you to live a healthy life and you know how much smoky could like mask them wanting to you know help themselves or yeah. even like their physical health later down the line like smoking that much every day for your lungs for your and- lungs it's so bad for you yeah um i see the frustration and i'm sorry but like kristen's right things with addiction like if they don't want to help themselves there's nothing you could do and it's only going to stress you out even more if you try to control it right Now, what you are doing already, you said like letting him know you're there to talk and just keeping that door open is the most you can do. Yeah. You know, above all, if this really is something that you do not like, that is so valid. And if I'm, you know, I'm not saying leave him, you know, but like it's something you need to consider. It is something you need to consider because assuming he'll never change, not saying that's the point, but like you have to assume worst case here, just rolling your options, assuming he will never change are you actually willing to have that for the rest of your life around said kids and you know, all that. So maybe something to think about in your lane too, but you know, don't over exhaust yourself with this. And, it, and that's another thing to consider if you feel like it's starting to suck the energy out of you and really worry you like that's maybe something you don't want to be around, mm-hmm. but you know, take it day by day. Uh, just, I guess still remain a support to him, but Protect you're so yourself valid. Too. Yeah, you're, that's you're so, valid. so valid. And I'm sure it's so common. I'm sure so many people listening right now relate to that. Like everyone has a different relationship with weed, um, especially nowadays. It's, you know, getting more and more legal throughout the states and all that. And I, I get it. You're mm-hmm. valid in that. Okay, next one. The subject line is my ex confessed his love and wants to try again. Ugh. One of those. Hey, girlies. This is my first time writing in, but I've been listening to the podcast since episode one. Thanks for being the big sisters I wish I had. Sorry in advance for the novel. First time writing in. Welcome. Thank you for writing in. Okay, so to give some backstory, my ex, a 27-year-old male, and I, a 24-year-old female, were together for three years. The last year of our relationship was a mess. He had a poor self-image, felt lost about his career, and was insecure about the fact I had more dating and life experience than he did. I helped him through a lot on this struggle and gave my gave all of myself to him, 
putting myself and my needs last with minimal support in return. I wanted to be with only him during this time period, but he felt stuck. So in an attempt to make both of us happy, we put all sorts of various rules on a relationship at different points so he can explore himself and others while staying with me. Basically so he could have his cake and eat it too. Big surprise, not. This ended up creating a lot of confusion, heartbreak, and trust issues for me. When I finally broke things off for good, he said all the things I'd been wanting to hear for almost a year and telling me he finally realized I'm all he wants and that I'll always be the one who got away. But I was done drowning in him and needed the constant heavy anxiety cloud that was looming overhead during the last year together gone. Fast forward eight months and I'm in a great place. I have wonderful friends and roommates and I'm actually going to find out if I get into one of the best clinical psychology PhD programs this week. Holy shit. Oh my god I hope you do let us know. Uh, This is where the plea for advice comes in. I got dinner with this ex recently wanting to approach things as friends only. A week later or so he professed his love for me and said he would do anything to have another chance with me and I'm the best thing that's ever happened to him. He realized all the things he did wrong and has just regretted things more and more. He's convinced we could get through anything, saying we could start slow and he'd even want to move in with me if I leave Boston. It all sounds very manipulative and love bomby, but I truly think he's coming from a genuine place, even if he's wearing rose-colored glasses. I'm really excited to experience the world on my own, and I don't think our values or amount of drive or ambition line up. But I'm stuck on the what if since things were good, they were so good, And he said he's addressed the issues that led to our downfall. What if I say no and miss the opportunity for us to actually work? Please help. What are y'all's takes? Thanks, Alex and Kristen. Sorry again for the novel. P.S. Now that you're on the East Coast, y'all got to visit Boston. We're Uh, actually thinking about going to Boston maybe for my birthday. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe we'll go summer. Yeah. Um, Leave your past in the past. If it's meant for you, you wouldn't have lost it. Yep. I think he's seeing how well you're doing without him. And he's like, oh, I fucked up. Yep. That's let him let him that, let yeah. him have that lesson. Then he, he did fuck up. People well, who realize what they have after it's gone can't just come back and be like, oh, shit, like lay everything out of the line. I love you with all my heart. I'm going to be better. Like it is love bombing. It's love bombing. And you know it. You know it. Yeah. And, and if he couldn't realize that the value of you while you're together, he had you had to leave like He has some commitment issues like it's that's just that's not the right time to like realize someone your heart is for you. Right. And like, fuck, if he really wants to win you back, one dinner of him just saying words means nothing. Nothing. Let him fucking like actually do things and like move mountains to get you back if this is really the one. But I think at this point, trust your gut. You know exactly what this is at the root. Yep. Tr- listen to your gut. I know it's screaming at you. And zoom out. Trust in your higher power, whatever that is, that if it was meant for you, it would not have had a downfall in the first Mm-mm. place. Mm-mm. It wouldn't have. It's It really is that simple. And you overthinking and thinking about the what ifs. There are so many people out in the universe. Just because you had good times with this one person doesn't mean that you're not going to have great relationships in the future and meet so many people who could love you the way that your heart deserves to be loved. One person doing good just part of the time and then confessing his love, that doesn't show you the maximum amount of love that you deserve. Like there's literally the bare minimum, (laughs) right? There's people out there that you're going to meet that are going to show you what love looks like without confusion they won't yep. need a test to realize it they'll right. just know it they'll know it when they have you and when they see you and that's keep it yeah you know you know what to do you're in such a like you are about to catapult into the best version of yourself like i'm so proud of you fucking phd is kick nice. ass that's so cool that's huge focus on you like your life is about to be so great mm-hmm and he's going to see it and he's going to regret his shit even more. But don't let that pull you back to him. I think him like creeping back in is the universe giving you a little uh, mirror, a little like checkpoint to be like, hey, what did I teach you? Yep. You don't need this. Move on. Yep. You've already it's been eight months and you already feel so much better. That's relatively quick, dude. Like that's a short amount of time. Yeah. You you clearly needed to detox 
this person out of your life. Absolutely. So don't don't let them come back in. Okay, this one's called Real Life Smut Plot. What's a smut? It's a smut. Here, I'll Google it. It says it's a multicellular fungi. <laughs> a fungal just, disease of grains and which parts of the ear? Maybe Google like Small calling. Small flake or suit. Other dirt. Ew. Oh, a smut. Okay, Urban Dictionary. This is where yeah. I need to go. <laughs> yeah, this is weird. It's an acronym. Mm. Sexual maturity under text. What does that mean? A story, usually a book or fan fiction that includes one or more sexually explicit scenes. Ooh, okay. Glad I picked this one. Yeah, this is cool. Real life smut plot. Hi, Kristen and Alex. Love Hi. you both. Longtime fan of both Kristen's YouTube and the pod. I've always been a committed fan, but never thought I'd have a story worth telling. But ooh, girl, do I need some advice for this odd situation. Now, are y'all ready for this? Yes. Are y'all ready for this? Okay. To preface, my boyfriend, 28-year-old male, and I, 28-year-old female, have been together for three years, lived together for two years, and we have each our own adopted dogs. Oh. We've created this little family over time. Long, long story short, I do not see a continuous future with my boyfriend i think i knew this since september but i thought things would change when we got back classic things didn't change a few weeks before a vacation with my family he mentioned proposing in the next year and my heart sunk to my gut that's when i knew i'd have to break it off after the trip that was my gut telling me it's not meant to be and it hurt coming to that realization he's still an amazing man but he deserves someone who is in 110 percent like I said, I knew I couldn't see a future with him since before the trip. I didn't want to hurt him beforehand, and it was like two weeks before the trip, so I didn't want to mess anything up since my parents were paying for the trip as a Christmas present. My younger brother, 25-year-old male, was supposed to bring his girlfriend at the time, but he broke up with her before Christmas, and I saw how that messed with the financial part already since the airfare was in the girlfriend's name. Anyway, on to the juicy part, my brother's guest. I've never met the friend, 26-year-old male, but before the morning of our 8 a.m. flight. My brother and boyfriend are cool, so we were all talking together and hanging out most of the trip. The conversation flowed super easily with the friend, and I even mentioned to my boyfriend he could make a conversation with himself without trying. I found myself t talking with him more and more, even caught myself looking past my boyfriend to tell the friend something. I do feel guilty, guilty about it but something really connected between me and the friend. I noticed the little glances the first few days, but I never, or sorry, but I thought nothing of it because he's totally out of my league on top of my boyfriend and brother being within 15 feet at all times. But we would end up walking two by two on the sidewalks around the resort and I'd find us pairing off often, chatting and laughing. When paired with my boyfriend, silence. Now, the really juicy part, the last night. It was about 2 a.m. at one of the resort bars. My boyfriend, brother, the friend, and I were doing tequila shots throughout the night. At one point, we were all at the table when my boyfriend and brother went to grab more shots, leaving me and the friend. Jeez. Now, I know how fucking ridiculous this sounds, but I swear on my baby dog's life, I'm not making this up. This man looks at me and says, so I wasn't expecting Jim's sister to be a smoke show smoke show <laughs> jim's my brother i'm the smoke show when i tell you i almost broke my neck by cocking it to the left in confusion that would be an understatement smoke he goes shit. on to tell me he thought so from that morning at 5 a.m when we were leaving my parents house for the airport i thought he was kidding since i was wearing a huge hoodie my glasses i'm a religious contact wearer and don't like my glasses same <laughs> and hair in a bun he said he was serious and I'm stunning and there's something about my eyes and smile. Dudes. <laughs> he was just laying it out all. He was laying it all out there. I told him I thought he's attractive. And when I first saw him, I thought, oh, shit, because he's that attractive. Then he told me how he doesn't mean to be disrespectful, but he wishes I came on this trip single. What? Then something I kind of regret telling the friend is I wish I came on the trip single, too. I was a little tequila drunk and it's no excuse, but I let my guard down and was flirting. I looked past the boyfriend to see my boyfriend and brother staring at us. Oh, shit. <sighs> when they came over, we basically went right back to the rooms because my boyfriend was pissed by my flirting. And I completely understand that. I wasn't touching him. I guess it was the smiling and facial expressions that did it. Yeah. And, and he knows about like everyone, how you flirt. Absolutely. Yeah. 
The next day we were traveling back home. When the friend and I were alone for a moment, he said he knows things are rocky between my boyfriend and I. And now that I have his number from the vacation group chat, I can text him if anything changes and want to get some drinks. I told him I would because I can't fight the connection we seem to have. And now we both know we're attracted to each other. Oh, on the plane, we ended up all three sitting next to each other. (laughs) My boyfriend put himself in the middle on purpose, I swear. The first night back home, I had a dream smooching on the friend. Ugh. Now the hard part, the breakup. Boyfriend and I talked after the trip, and he actually said he felt we're not connecting. We're both content with how things are instead of wanting to grow, etc. I agreed with everything as I felt that way too, but he wants to work on it, and I don't necessarily. That conversation was the day we got back, and I thought it was too soon and would look like I'm dumping him, him to get with a friend. I want to be respectful and do it at the right time without leading him on. But I've already texted the friend to ask for clarity from the conversation. And I had to ask if he talked with my brother about that little smoke show combo. He didn't. And we agreed it'd be best for my brother to not know if we end up ever hanging out. I guess I have a few questions. How should I go about this breakup? Saying I don't see a future with him anymore. I still feel terrible about the situation, but the friend feels like the light at the end of the tunnel. The friend even texted me and said he hopes I'm not doing anything because of him, which I told him it's been a long time coming. Should my brother know about this stuff with the friend after the breakup? I'm lost and confused. I'm not looking for the friend to be the new boyfriend. I just really want to be around him. I also don't want to fuck up either my relationship with my brother or their friendship if he finds out. I know this is a whole damn book, but I need some of that advice any input would be greatly appreciated love you guys follow me for a sec where are we going <laughs> follow me yeah, everything, everything is, is all right, right. i love I'll uncle cracker t- okay i think since the relationship has been rocky since before this trip you went into this trip already knowing that you were going to break up with him after the trip i think this man represents something I think it represents the aftermath like of what's waiting for you, what's waiting for you and the, for lack of a better word, potential freedom that you'll have after this relationship. Uh-huh. I think it could have been anyone and you would have been excited for. And like, I get that. Mm-hmm. I relate to that. When you know a relationship is done before it's actually done, your head's already out of it. Yep. You're already one looking foot at, out the door. Yep. One foot out the door. You're already looking at the cute guy walking down the street. Like, oh, what if he, what if I had a night out with him mm-hmm. and you had a very fleeting flirty. I'm not saying you guys don't have a connection, sure, but you guys did have a very fleeting fun time on a trip. We all know trip. You're already flings. in like la la land. Like, right. You're, you know, no rules. You had a, drinking every day. Exactly. You had a trip fling in a time when your head was already out of your relationship. And I think it just like enhanced it even yeah. more. With that being said, you absolutely need to, there's never going to be a good time to break no, up with your boyfriend. I don't know. You just need to break it off. It's going to be a random day that you're going to need to sit down and just have a conversation where you guys just need to part ways And you mentioned, you know, not wanting to hurt his feelings and like he deserves better and all very true things. And you prolonging this like definite destiny is hurting his feelings, Mm -hmm. whether he knows it or not. Um, Just like tagging or uh, stringing someone along longer than they should. is That's already rude to do. I mean, I get it. It's hard to do it. And you're not alone in that. A lot of breakups take a long time to do for the same reasons like you have you have an amazing heart you have a very big heart but yeah there's never going to be a right time I would just do it and as for the brother thing I would tell your brother yeah I would tell him like I like they probably he probably already knows yeah the fact that they were both looking and your boyfriend saw what was happening so he was mad like they probably said something when they were looking at the two of you like yeah but I would let him know you know he doesn't you know every single detail of every transaction you have with this guy forever but like at least let him know you're texting and like yeah i don't know i feel like i don't have a brother but i have a sister and i feel like there's some sibling code there where like you need to be in the loop if like i'm fucking with one of your friends yeah you know absolutely that's that's, yeah because i would hate for now you and your brother to have some 
beef because he's like, what, why would you not tell me? Right. And if you do have a very real connection with this man and you down the line do want a relationship with him, mm-hmm. you don't want your family like built on this sneaking weird, around. Yeah. Yeah. Put it all out there. Yep. You'll feel better about it too. You will. And I think if you put everything out there, it will also reveal if this is something you should follow. Right. But you're you know? so, you're so valid. Like, you know, yeah. the relationship's done. You're just having fun. You're just flirting. Yeah. It's so normal. It's so normal. And go on dates with this guy, even if it doesn't turn into anything. Don't let um, the potential of what you and this, the friend could be like muddle the ending of your current relationship. Yeah. He deserves a clean break. There's multiple hearts involved and if you could save some real damage that you could be doing to your current boyfriend just break it off yep okay next one the subject line is moving on from a pathological liar ah Ah. i I wrote in (laughs) (laughs) i just got that (laughs) hi alex and Kristen. please keep anon hi hi first i want to say i love the podcast i listen to you at the gym and somehow it makes the heavy stuff feel lighter Oh, I love that. That translates over to my mental health state because you both make the heavy parts of life feel lighter too. You're so sweet. Thank you. This may or may not be useful, but I'm 28 years old and have dated multiple people since this situation, but it hasn't changed anything. Mm. I'm writing in to ask for guidance on a complicated feeling I have for an ex. This person and I, let's call him liar because that's the most APT, TBH. I know what TBH means. What's apt yeah that's the most apt like um ap- applicable i think maybe yeah. apt. like she's apt to be i learned so many words yeah you do during <laughs> when you guys write in like <laughs> you make me feel dumb i don't know no, anything just up in our right think about how many words there are Kristen. like yeah but it, it's like my first language like i should know <laughs> whatever okay. you're okay you're smart that's bigger fish to fry. I'll add that one to the list. Okay, so Liar and I met at work. We both worked for a different organizations, but we were at the same location. Because of this, we spent a lot of time together. He had just split with his fiance, and I had just split with mine, so we were both freshly single. He and I hit it off immediately. We had the same interests, the same sense of humor, and our connection was obvious. We got to a point where we didn't even need to talk it out loud to understand what the other was thinking. Not like mind reading, obviously, but the ability to read facial expressions and recognize cues. Needless to say, we fell for each other fast and hard. Everything seemed perfect except for the parts that weren't. Like I said, we were pretty much a perfect match. We created life plans together and made each other all sorts of promises. It was so serious that he'd even met my toddler. He was always talking about how excited he was to be a stepdad and all of the fun things he wanted us to do together. The life he wanted to build was amazing and so exciting. He was pretty much the unholy trifecta. White guy in the military with a J name. Woof. Wow. You really got him. (laughs) Without giving too many details, his job required high secrecy and confidentiality. Mm, CIA. For sure. So (laughs) you got hella close to the mic. (laughs) CIA. So when he went a wall on the weekends, it was typically because he was working there. We also had to cancel a lot of dates last minute, sometimes without notice. There were a lot of red flags, but honestly, I was so in love and so blinded that I looked over them very quickly. He'd given a reason or explain it away and I would just accept it. I think I just didn't want to see them. Honestly, the only thing that made me feel like something wasn't right was the intense anxiety I had all the time. (laughs) Yep, that's how it happens. I stopped sleeping, I had no appetite, and I was so anxious. There was a routine that started happening where everything would be perfect during the workday, but after work, he'd always had to rush to the gym, and he started going AWOL during the weekends inconsistently and without any communication. So I would spend those weekends incredibly anxious. There were a few times that his ex would text him, and he would handle that and just text text her to not text him, or something similar. He always showed me them. I'd gone to his house before, so I wasn't worried at all. And he told his friends about us and showed me messages between them too. I'm just going to fast forward and say that I ended up finding out that he was still with his fiance. Oh? He was cheating on me with his fiance of two years who he was cheating on me with. After that came out, everything else came out as a lie. 
his age, his address, the fuck his up. job, all of the messages he showed me were fake. He would change my name in his phone when he went home. When I came to his house, he packed up all of her stuff and hid it in the garage and moved it back out after I'd left. Everything had been a lie. Oh my God. He told me that the love and the feelings were real. Of course he did. (laughs) He told me that the love and the feelings were real. When we were together, he would tell me that I was his best friend and he felt like he was ruining my life, but would never say why. That's a fucking red flag. My friend reached out to his fiance and told her, and at that point, everything crumbled. Liar's fiance addressed it, obviously. He called me that night and was cold and detached. He told me that my friend should have never said, said that because it was none of her business. His fiance's family reached out to me and called me a homewrecker, a slut, and told me that he told them that I was a liberal bitch who was a terrible mom and didn't have custody of her kids. To be fair, liberal slash leftist, true. Bitch, when necessary. Mm-hmm. And the last part was cruel and untrue. He ended up leaving the state overnight. Oh my God. We a texted- runner. That's crazy. He probably didn't even actually work for like the CIA or anything. Right. Either. Whatever. We texted and talked on the phone a lot that week. When I told him what his fiance's family told me, he burst into tears, said it wasn't true, and Ugh. begged me to not talk to them because he because they just wanted to hurt me. Then he disappeared for weeks. We ended up talking again after about six weeks. He lived in a different state and we talked every day, all day. We were right back to planning our lives together. What? I have no excuse outside of my absolute dedication to delusion. The hoops I jumped through to forgive him could have earned me an Olympic medal. All of that ended up being a lie too. And then we stopped talking. He blocked me when I found out. It's now 2024 and I have not stopped missing him. I know he's trash and a liar and is probably several other diagnosable things, but I always find myself wondering about him at least once a month. I visualize scenarios of if we ever saw each other again, and it's so wild because I've dated multiple people since then, but it never changed anything. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I'm still stuck on him. I know he's bad and I should hate him. Any advice or thoughts? Sorry for the novel. Love you both. This is exactly what fucking liars and narcissists do. Mm-hmm. It's because he he gave you the, those f- fucking feelings of building your fucking dream life together that literally released oxytocin in your brain that no other word has ever released before. I fucking get it, dude. And it wraps around your heartstrings and it feels irreversible. It feels like nothing will ever match that level of love again. I hear you, I get you, but it's fucking bullshit. Missing him is one thing. I'll give you that. Like that's, that is valid. That's normal. You're going to miss exes. Know the difference of missing someone and that actually being your person. Do not let the missing him overrule and cloud your judgment and your memories of the fucked up shit he's done. He's a pathological liar. He's a monster. You have to remember that he manipulated his whole life to quite literally paint the perfect picture for you. The picture wasn't fake. It was fake. It was it, like, it was all just watercolor that washed off. Like it, that's what's so shitty about this is because your feelings were real because it was relative to you and you didn't know it was a lie in the beginning. And it was so intentional for him to paint this picture because yes. he had a full ass other life. Mm-hmm. He had a full, he cheated on his fiance with you with you he's gonna fucking do it again yes and and then he ran he's go, he's probably already doing it to the next exactly. bitch exactly wherever he fucking ran exactly. to exactly like, it's ugh. in his dna and please 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 believe me when i tell you that it has absolutely nothing to do with you that's what i'm saying it's he would have done it to anybody yep you just you got in the crossfire which is shitty but you also got out of it so stay out yes stay out of that shit and try and remember like Kristen said missing an ex is so valid but try and remember what you're missing was not real those were not his real feelings nope let you know I know that could feel like oh god it was a waste of time then and nothing's real and like I get that but no what was real was your ability to love Mm mm-hmm your feelings, your feelings were, real. were real. You were just being your, fed the lie. Right. But your ability to love someone 
had nothing to do with him. You will be able to do that to someone who deserves it and who gives it back in the language that you deserve and is loyal to you. So what you're missing is feelings that you're capable of, mm -hmm. not feelings that he gave you. Gave you. Rewind that and listen to it again. I'm sweating. Because fuck liars. I'm, I'm super over them. <laughs> they just are so rude. So bad and don't deserve love. They lie. Liars lie. They lie and cheat. They, and I'm so, like, <sighs> I'm so sorry for his fiance and I her know. family. Like everyone involved. Everyone involved besides him. Fuck that guy. Nope. I do not feel bad for you. Ooh. We could even sit there and, oh, he did this because he never knew how to love when he, he probably had a really shitty childhood. You're a grown blah, man. Blah. Go to therapy. Figure it out. Regardless of whatever the fuck made you that type of way, it's your responsibility on this earth to be a better person and take accountability and grow from hurting people. Don't just repeat the cycle. Fucking idiot. I'm pissed. Dumb asses. A bunch of liars and cheaters this up. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's called, he cheated and I decided to stay. Golly, guys, what are we doing? <laughs> Dumb decision? Yeah. Oh, come on. Guys, 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 guys. Seriously, like <laughs> see shit for what it is. Take off your freaking glasses. Or put some on. Ugh. I love your podcast and I love to listen to you guys on my way to work in the morning. Drive no safe. one. Yes, please drive safe. No one but you can make me laugh in that t in that time, and I've learned so much about me in this while listening to you. I apologize in advance when this entry is going to be a little bit confusing and long. I will try my best to explain everything. So I'm currently with my boyfriend for four years, and I would say our days are mostly good than bad. The situation that shattered me in our relationship happened when we were one and a half years together, and we just freshly moved to get moved in together into his apartment. That was in peak Corona time and I developed OCD and PCOS. I think I don't need to explain more that this time was horrific for me and I struggled enough with my thoughts and my weight gain. Anyway, one day my boyfriend and I got into a pretty messy fight and I left for my old apartment to pack up some more things. The weird thing was that he didn't call or came or come after me like one of us usually does after a fight. After some time, I called and tried to end this fight, but even after a few weeks, I could still feel how he was weird to me and kind of cold. So one day, he was off to his band practice, and I was home alone. Suddenly, my intuition told me to go to his old phone, which he switched maybe two weeks ago. I had this weird feeling of checking if he still had some old photos of his ex-girlfriend, but what I found instead was much more disturbing. I found two text messages messaging apps in which one or sorry in which on both of them he wrote with two different girls one of them even had my name fucking weirdo <laughs> <sighs> i found out he was sexting with them sending each other videos and pictures of each other masturbating and telling each other all the dirty things they want to do to each other they even talked about pretty personal things like his quote, crazy and controlling ex-girlfriend, whom is probably me, LOL. And the worst thing is they also were talking about meeting and everything. I got sick to my stomach after reading all of these disgusting things. I called yeah. my best friend to come and pick me and my things up. And I called my boyfriend and asked him where they would have met. I knew right away when I said he shall come and that will be the last time that he is going to see me once he was home and we talked and cried so much he told me things like that it was over for him and that he was just waiting for the right time to break up with me after a lot of talking and even going to the car to my best friend and telling him everything i came back and he was so full of shame he was lying on the floor crying and feeling all of his guilt and shame i felt bad for him and asked him if i should go or if we can work it out he said i should stay and I stayed. I know that a lot of you may think I am dumb or naive for staying, but in my head, the love I felt for him was still there, even though my heart was broken. I cried so much, and now I must say the time after this event really changed me. I asked so many questions, most of them he didn't even know knew the answer himself. I asked if he would have really met them. He told me no. He just told them what they wanted to hear. I asked him if they ever met or had sex or anything like that, and he also said no. We had a lot of 
times in the last two and a half years where we sat together and talked about if we could still recover from this and wanted to be together or not. And we always come back to our love. So now I think about all of this from time to time, but mostly I keep the thoughts to myself because in the past, every time I talk about it with him, he was so ashamed and felt so bad that I don't want to keep bringing it up. We even got to- Then he shouldn't have done it in the first place. Right. Shouldn't have to tiptoe around making him feel bad for something he did. He did. Okay, we'll get to it. Sorry. Jesus Christ. We even got two cats, which we love so much and wouldn't have it any other way. In the end, we are adults. I'm 28 and he's 32. In my head, I always struggle between the two sides. One, I cannot be with him forever. He cheated on me and maybe we'll do it again. If he can't love me when I am sick, OCD and PCOS, then how can I be sure he will stay when other diseases may come or go or other life tragedies will happen? We never know. Or two, he just wanted something to make him feel good. He really isn't the type to cheat and is such a sweetheart all the time. He didn't kiss or have sex with someone. If that happened, I wouldn't be able to stay with him. And in the two and a half years now, he didn't do anything similar. So girls, what is your take on this? Would you be able to be in a relationship with someone who did something like this? I'm in therapy and we talk about the subject a lot. And even in there, I'm always unsure about my decision. I love him a lot, but this will... This really took a toll on me. Will I ever completely forgive him and be able to recover from this? I also spend some time away from him because of my job and I found myself missing him a lot. But then on the other side, especially from social media, you always see these people saying you can never trust a cheater and you should always leave a relationship when something like this happened and cheating starts in the in the head, not by kissing or anything, which is, of course, true. But I am still confused if I am letting the love of my life go because of a stupid mistake. I cheated on my ex-boyfriend once and know how it feels to break free from someone but still love them with all of my heart. I would love your advice. Thank you. Sorry for the long text. If this wasn't grammatically correct, I apologize. English is not my first language. I'm from Germany. Love you lots. (sighs) I'm pissed. I'm, I'm pissed and sad for you. Yeah, he didn't like technically did it but like he cheated he emotionally cheated videos of masturbating sending pictures and videos of his body he cheated he He cheated on you and you feel like you can't let this go because first of all you're not allowed to have a decent conversation about it because he turns into victim mode and you end up feeling sorry for him so he's just keeping you in this loop of you feel like you have to keep it inside because you can't hurt his feelings. No, he's just, he's just playing that act so that you don't bring it up again and you don't hold him accountable. You have to break up with him. This is you. You asked us if we would be in a relationship if this occurred. The second I found out about something like this, I'm never speaking to you again, ever. That's very, that's like probably the easiest decision I would ever make. Easiest. Yeah gonna hurt of course it's gonna hurt and like we keep saying like it you know breakups are about you know breaking old habits and you know we're used to having people in our lives and soul ties and it'll be uncomfortable but like you deserve way better dude yeah you deserve way better than that it's it's that simple you know regardless of your connection whatever like you're just making excuses for him yeah if like we said in the a few ones ago a few uh entries ago like you're like, oh, am I going to fuck up the love of my life? Oh, I don't think the love of your life would do this to you. And if it's meant for you, you wouldn't lose it. I don't think the universe would be like throwing this wrench, to say the least, in your connection. I just, I, 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 that's my belief though. So I don't know. Sure, there are situations where people cheat in one time and then they're like, oh my God, like, the real remorse real right but i don't think that's what this is to to not allow you to talk it out and he, he's like starts feeling bad about it and like becoming the victim he's not giving you the space to heal from this because he doesn't care about your healing no he just cares that he got away and he still gets his cake it's it's not like he's actually trying to grow from this and like letting you get out all the feelings you need so you guys can really move on like that's not what this is and the thing is like at this rate you will never get over it. You asked if you'll ever be able to heal for this and forgive him. Like he's keeping you in this cycle so that you don't heal from it. Yeah. He's not giving you a safe space to heal from it. And that's the only way that I think the small percentage of relationships that survive after infidelity 
That's the only way it works right. is if you really, really get to the root and like fully heal and fully move on. But like he's not even giving you the platform to do that. And that's the least he could do right now if he really wanted it to work. <sighs> I'd leave him, dude. It's because it, you're right. Like, what about later in life when like you you get old and you're like not as hot and popping as you are right now? Or like you said, you know, God forbid another disease comes up or whatever. And, you know, I hate to be a fucking, I don't know if I'm being a pessimist or like a Debbie Downer, but he's a grown ass man. He's not going to just one day grow up from this. He's not going to change. It would have happened. By now. It would have happened by now. And the fact that he's not even holding himself accountable, it doesn't exist in his world. No, he doesn't feel like he needs to heal or grow from this. Yeah, because you you let him get away with it. Yep. That's just like how that's it, the reality of it. That's what like enabling people is is when you don't hold them accountable to the consequences of their actions right and he even and that's a disservice you, to everybody involved he sat you down and said he he was like already he, clocking out he, was he gonna, meant he just to didn't sabotage know. the relationship it was intentional yes. he meant to sabotage the relationship because he thought he was going to get out soon and then there was a split second where he, where he was like oh i can i can get sympathy from her now mm -hmm. and he ran with it because all of this is probably rooted in some sort of shame and he finally after he got a rise out of you during like when you first found the text and everything he was like oh wait i could get my attention fixed from someone three feet away from me now yep all right i'll be with her i'm gonna stay with her now it's all just selfish please please like leave please leave do yourself a favor and leave yeah. you deserve so so much so better, much better a pure love an easy love a simple love and by simple i mean like you know, easy you're not to understand about it. Yeah. Exactly. Not this dude. I'm sorry. I know I get like, I feel like I'm like kind of sounding like a bitch right now, but I just, mm -hmm. you guys know I get riled up about this at the moment. And we um, just want the best for all of you guys. Absolutely. Like, we keep saying it. Leave these assholes. Put them in a garbage disposal. Fuck. Okay. This is going to be the last one. And judging by the subject line, I don't think it has anything to do with stinky poo poo but men. God bless. So we'll end on a, a different note. The subject line is unhappy where I am, unsure where I'm going. Hi, girlies. I've watched the podcast for over a year now and have fallen in love with you guys and your personalities. I love how fun and fresh you girls keep it and love every piece of advice you give. That being said, I could use a little of that good advice. Right now, I'm at the point in my life where I'm unhappy. I don't love my routine and day-to-day -day life. There are a few friends I want to get away from, and I just notice how un unhappy I am every day in my current situation. I know the obvious answer is to get out, but it's simply not possible logistically or financially for me to do that. However, I do know what I want. I know how I want my life to look, and I've started making some changes to get that life. And I know that life will make me happy because the changes I have made have brought my mood up so much and made me enjoy life. Now for the advice. When making these changes, I'm obviously happy, but the thought of changing my life up so much leaves me a little uneasy. My idea for the, for the life I think I want is so drastically different from where I am now in every sense of the word. I guess that I'm asking... I guess what I'm asking is how do I know that this life I think I want is actually something that will make me happy and I'm not just being influenced by social media or others lives. How do I know that this huge step is actually the right one and when the right time comes that moving away and completely changing how I live is the right thing to do. I want to get out and live differently but the thought of straying from what I know scares me a little and I just don't want to make the wrong choice. Thank you so much for reading and sprinkling some wise words on me. Love you both and watching the podcast. Give Link love for me. Mm. Bye, ladies. Please keep anonymous. This is totally like I a like perspective I love thing. this. Yes. I love where you're at in life right now. I really yeah. do. And that's what I'm about to say is like, you see this as a bad place in your life. This is such a cool place to be, dude. You're already being proactive in a time where you know you want change. Yeah. I think life is about trial and error. And I think yep. you're at a point in your life where you know you're itching for something different. And I like full heartedly believe you could go out there and try any version of your future life. And you're just going to be happy that you're out there doing something different. It doesn't matter what it is. 
I totally understand the overthinking and the worry about so change. The, and the like, brain is terrified of change. Right. Like, and thinking if so you're valid. making the right decision with where to move or being influenced by other people, that's so valid. But I, I truly believe that you're going to go out there and experience all these new things and you're going to be fulfilled simply by doing new things, not by doing like, but is this making sense? Mm-hmm. Like the specific things. Yes. It, you'll find what naturally comes to you and what naturally you're like, how your life is going to turn out. But I think just getting out there and experiencing all of these new things is what's going to fulfill you right now. That's going to scratch that itch. Like yep. you're clearly downloading some type of um, pull to change up your energy. And I think it's because there's something really good for you in, and it's like, you're about to reach it, but you just need to like cut the cord of just being uneasy about it. Of course it's scary. When we fucking moved to New York, you guys, it was terrifying. It It was was a shot in the dark. It It was was literally a shot in the dark. We knew no, no, sorry. What? We (laughs) knew no one out here. Yep. It was terrifying. There was nights where we would fucking cry. Like it was, it was scary. And it was this really, you know, what felt like a risky thing to do. And it it was all these normal, like emotions that you're feeling about this change that you're anticipating right now. But the worst that happens is you, you don't like what you do, what you're about to do. And then you just change it again, the same way you're about to change from where you're at right now to this next step, whatever that looks like for you. You can also just change it a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time and be ever changing. I think reread what you wrote in or re-listen to it or whatever and just switch up your perspective right now Mm -hmm. like this uh, you know you didn't say your age or anything but honestly that has nothing to do with this either I think it's such a human experience yes you're doing exactly what you should be doing pushing boundaries questioning your comfort zone like you have a drive to know what's what's out there Mm -hmm. you're not stuck in your own little box right now and this is you're you actually wrapped up in one entry, the most beautiful parts of life. Yeah. And I, it's yeah. how we grow. Absolutely. I like, I keep looking down at this, like be scared, be scared and then go do it. And then fuck fail and regret something you did and then change Try it again. again. Like it, it's gonna happen regardless, but as much as it might be a risk to regret, it's also might be the best decision you've ever made think about that think about if you stay where you're at in life you're gonna years down the line that's the biggest what if yes that's the that's the biggest regret of like that's the biggest possible regret if you continue to live in this life that you already feel like you need to break out of yep and something I even told myself when we moved here and like something I feel like everybody can apply to their lives is what you're doing now you know how to do Mm -hmm. so worst case you don't like this risk you're about to take you just come, you can come back and go back to your old life for the most part. Yeah. I'm sure we can get nitty gritty here and say like, okay, yeah, you might not be able to get that exact apartment again or that exact job. But generally speaking, like, does this making sense? Like, yeah, you'll, you'll know once you're out there that it's not, it's not that bad. It's not that hard. You're it's, it's not going to kill you. It's not like, going to kill you. It depends obviously what type of risk we're talking about here. But right. if we're talking about just like up and moving, if you can, and you, you don't have kids or you're not in like these big life situations that are tying you down or anything like do it yeah this is the time to do it our best friend Bree, she moved out to arizona on a whim yep never lived there before only knew a handful of people it was really hard her first few months but she loves it now she loves it now flourishing has a full group of friends met a guy yep. like you don't it's, know until you try life is about what you fucking put into it and if you go into it we talked about this all the time full-heartedly you're gonna get that back Mm -hmm. it's gonna come back to you tenfold yeah release a little bit of control right now that Mm -hmm. could be also what's making you feel anxious about like oh like i'm uneasy well what's gonna happen just let it happen Mm -hmm. just like go with the flow right now and when i'm in situations like this where like i can tell things are kind of up in the air that's where i tell myself okay you need to be a yes man so maybe try being a yes man for the next like two weeks. I love our yes man and just faces. Like, right. And just see what the universe is going to put in your lap. Mm-hmm. Just try that out. Yeah. I mean. I'm so excited for you. Yeah. This is great. Be, be scared. Don't be afraid of being scared. And I think that'll also 
change your view on this. Mm-hmm. It's also so natural to not be content with where you're at in life. Like that's, <laughs> it's, I feel like that's a fucking case study of our generation too. Yeah. Because the p- one point you did make, you said, Am, uh, how do I know if I'm not being influenced by social media and others' lives? That is a whole other sector of, you know, I think something a lot of our generation is experiencing is we're so exposed. The grass is greener. Yeah. And like building lives that are inspired by what you see on social media, which is just a highlight reel anyway. Like, but it, like switch your perspective. It, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. You have, you now have the opportunity. We're told all the time by our parents, like it wasn't a thing to move out of your hometown. It, you know, this is, everyone still lives in their hot- hometown um, our parents' generation because they weren't exposed to all of the options. Yeah. And like, if you just look at it at the perspective of we have all of these options, life exists out of our current comfort zone. It, it's a beautiful thing. Yep. A little perspective change. I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. Yeah. I'm beautiful place to be in life. Let us know where you end up. Yeah. Look us up him. if you're in New York. <laughs> Looks up in the, in the phone book, in the phone book, <laughs> the big yellow thing, the funny pages. <laughs> That's what my funnyjunk.com. Gra- my grandpa used to say when we'd leave, he'd say, see you in the funny pages. Aww. Yeah. That's sweet. That's all. I want to play some chess. Oh, no, we need to go to Best Buy. Oh, yeah. we're You guys, we are going to buy some new TVs for our bedrooms. I don't have a TV in my room right now. And as I said earlier in the podcast, I slept on the couch the other night and falling asleep with the TV. I just forget how much I love it. It's I did that all growing up. And I haven't had a TV in my room since like 2019. I don't know. I thought like, oh, well, I don't need one. I'll just, I, I'll grow out of it, whatever. But I think it's something within my nervous system. Yeah. That like yearns to have you have the best TV sleep on of low. Your night. Yeah. The best of sleep your life. ever. Uh, but TV on low and whatever show on something happy and falling asleep to that. I sleep so much deeper. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting a TV. We're going to Best Buy. And my TV is, I, Liza gave it to me. She, it was an old TV that was in a closet when I moved to my Hollywood apartment five years ago. Yeah. And sometimes the sound goes out and I just listen to it or I just watch it silent with, um, subtitles. subtitles. <laughs> so <laughs> vintage. And then, like a silent film. Right. And then the sound just pop back on, but it'll come on so loud. fucking loud, Kristen. Oh. It's terrifying. That is really scary. Yeah. If so you're watching I, like a scary movie. And any minute the sound comes back and it's like, like <gasps> yeah. So it's, it's about it's time. time. It's and TVs are so cheap these days. Dude, I was looking at a 45 inch Insignia with a fire stick. 150 cost less than our dinner last night jesus that's <laughs> awful <laughs> yeah okay, we're gonna guys. go to best buy and uh maybe i'll meet a cute guy in the geek squad oh yeah hot 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 they all fuck <laughs> they yeah. all fuck yeah they do well happy monday you guys we hope you have an incredible rest of have your a week great week as always patreon episode on friday mm-hmm. um we were thinking about doing something a little different yeah. for the patreon episode so Stay tuned for that. And if you're listening on Spotify, please rate us five stars, please. And leave a review on Apple Podcasts too. God, we're so bad at marketing ourselves. I'm like, (laughs) if you want. If you want. Rate us what you think we deserve. Whatever you guys think. If you have time, please. It's fine. You're fine. You don't have to do it. We Um, love you guys either way. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and turn on your notifications because YouTube, at least on my personal channel, is not sending out notifications right now. (laughs) I never get a notification. But... That makes me so upset. Tech these days. Nah. Am I right? Geek squad. We're going to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll know. Right? Not at all. Okay, guys. Have a great week. We love you. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.